Here is where I lay down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay down Every lie and every doubt This is my surrender and I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to You 
are all I'm chasing now This is my surrender This is my everyone it's good to see you again it's good to be here and for anyone new i am brother sam um before we uh get on to today's topic uh let's go do a quick prayer um thank you father for gathering us together thank you lord for blessing us and putting uh, the desire to hear the word in our hearts. Oh Lord, I pray, Lord, that you help us on this straight and narrow path. Lord, that you put love in our hearts, that you put patience in us, that you put loving kindness in us. Oh Lord, give us the wisdom and understanding Lord, to understand your word and to take it in and to use it in our everyday life. We thank you, Lord. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Prayer is just that simple, folks. You're just talking to the Lord. That's all you're doing. But let's get on to today's topic. Um. Today's topic is called uh, The Lord Will Restore. Yes, he's good like that. He will restore us. And, uh, and what brought me to this was uh, just uh, meditating on the word. And a thought just came to me about, um, you know, the body of Christ, you know, being discouraged. You know, we deal with a lot of discouragement just, you know, in our everyday lives. And, uh, and I think that when we go through discouragement like that, uh, that we forget who we serve. We forget who our Lord is. And that our Lord is a restoring God. Okay. You need to know that as long as you are following the Lord, you can't lose anything. Now, you may not get back exactly what you lost. But you will gain other things that will make up for what you lost. Okay, you need to hear that. You may not get back exactly what you lost, but you will receive new things to make up for it. Okay, okay, family. Okay, when you're with the Lord, all is not lost. For God is sovereign. It says everything under the heavens is his. If God wants you to have it, then you'll have it. And if you don't have it, then that means that you're better off not having it. But let's get to some scripture, okay? Let's read some scripture so that I can prove to you what I'm saying. Let's turn to 1 Samuel, chapter 30, verses 3 through 4. 1 Samuel, 
chapter 30, verses 3 through 4. And I know I say this all the time, but you never know who's new. I do like to read out the King James. And, um, and I recommend that you read out the King James as well. But if you can't, I try to read out a new King James. To me, that's the next best thing. But let's get started. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 3 through 4. And it says, So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Now, you, you have to pay attention to who this is happening to. We're talking about David, the Lord's anointed. We know he's anointed. It's in the word. God is with him. He's the one that slayed Goliath. We know that David is going to be the future king of Israel. We know that. And we know that David follows the Lord. He seeks the heart of the Lord. He seeks the face of the Lord. We know that. And yet, it says that his enemy came and they took the wives and the daughters and then they wept. Yes, this powerful man of God wept. Now, you got to think, if it happened to David, how much more so could it happen to us that we lose things? Things that are precious to us. But it's not just what happened to David. We have to pay attention to uh, what did David do? What did David do after he discovered this? The, s things like this is something that we need to recognize. We need to recognize what do we do when we go through hardships like this. Let's continue. Uh, Turn up. Well, you're already on chapter 30. Just go to verse six. OK. It says, and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. Now, listen, but David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. He encouraged himself. You hear that? You hear that family? He encouraged himself. Things aren't going to always go the way how you want it to go. But you need to remember who you serve and what he can do. He's there for us. Always. No matter what it looks like. It says he strengthened himself in the Lord. Now let's read what the New King James says. It says, now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Now, you don't have to turn to this. But in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I'll say that again. It says, Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And it says, But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. He's doing what scripture says. He's doing what scripture says. He lost what was his and he strengthened himself in the Lord. Because the Lord can restore all. The Lord can do all. Nothing is ever truly gone if you have a relationship with Christ. Let's see what else David did. It says 1 Samuel chapter 30. Verse 8. So we're still on chapter 30. Just go to verse 8. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? He spoke to the Lord. He went to him. And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. Listen to that. It says, For thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. Pay attention. 
God didn't give any direction. He just told David to go. David had to believe that he was going to receive. Okay? Think about that. There was no direction. God just told him to go. And you, gotta, you have to take what's in the scripture and apply it to your life. Most of the time we are discouraged and we have no plans. We don't know what to do. And we just sit. We pray to the Lord, but we just sit. We don't do anything. But the Lord didn't tell David to just sit around. He didn't tell David to just mope around. Come on, this should uplift you. This puts a fire in my belly when I hear stuff like this. When you pray to the Lord, when you pray to the Lord and you're seeking, you don't just sit around. You pray and you get up and you do. I spoke about this before. You're supposed to do all that you can in the power that God gave you. If you have two legs, you get up and you walk. David had to move. So if you're asking for a job, if, if, if you're thinking that you missed out, and you're trying to get a new job. You fill out applications. You pray to the Lord and you fill out applications. If you're looking for a husband, well then you get up and you get out there and you mingle. If you're looking to, for a wife, talk to the women in the church. Okay, if you want a business, well then you go out and you speak to the right people. It doesn't matter what direction you go in. You do all that you can. You seek wise counsel. You do all your research and you move. God is the one that opens doors and closes them. Somehow he will navigate you in the right direction. Like I said, it doesn't mean to be haphazard, haphazardly do things. But you end up doing things nonetheless. And he will move you in the right direction. Look, let's continue. Uh, go to verse 11. It says, and they found an Egyptian in the field. Listen to that. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread. And he did eat and they made him drink water. So David got up and he started moving. And he found an Egyptian in the field out of nowhere. Now, God is not like us. He doesn't see time one way. He knows the end from the beginning. So when David started moving, he didn't have to uh, push David in the right direction. He put the solution in front of David. It didn't matter if David went north or south or west or east. Whichever direction David went in, from the end to the beginning, the Lord took the solution and put it in his path. See, that's what I'm trying to say. The Lord will restore. The Lord will show up for you. Nothing is lost as long as you seek his face, just as David has done. The Lord will open and close doors. He'll put the solution right in front of you. But you have to have enough faith to move. You don't need to know every single thing. You just have to call on him and use your faith to move. All right, uh, go to verses 18 through 19. <laughs> I'm kind of running out of time here. I'm trying to get through this. <laughs> uh, 18 through 19. And it says, and David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. Do you see that? He put his trust in the Lord. He sought his face. When the Lord told him to move, he moved. He didn't sit there asking questions. He just did what the Lord told him and he obeyed. And he recovered all that he had lost. 
This is important because some of us are discouraged. We look into our past and we see that, you know, we didn't, we didn't get a good hand. We feel as if we missed out on things. We feel as if the devil robbed us, okay? That our enemy came in and robbed us and took from us. And when we think about the future, it looks bleak. But no, God owns everything under the heavens. Your enemy cannot take from you because we have someone who is uh, greater than him that is in the world. Who is in us is greater than him that is in the world. If God has it planned for us, we will have it. And it says that David recovered all. But I have another message. Because I know that there are some out there that are discovered, uh, excuse me, that are discouraged. Because they look in the past and they see that it is them. They, they perceive that it is them that made the mistake. It's not that the enemy came in and robbed them. As what happened to David. And David was doing what he was supposed to be doing. An enemy came and robbed him. But some of us look back in our past and we see and we think that we made um, our own failures. And I have a word for you too. Because you, you, you're going to see just how good of a God that we have. Turn to Joel chapter 1 verse 4. You're going to see. And this is why I love the Lord. I love the Lord for his character. I love him for his goodness towards us. You're going to see that it doesn't matter. Uh, go to uh, verse 4, chapter 1. It says, That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. Now, this is uh, Israel. This is the children of God being disobedient. And it says that they lost. They had nothing left. Everything was taken. But turn to uh, Joel uh, chapter 2, verses 23 through 27. And I love reading this. It puts a smile on my face because I know my God is good. He can do everything. He is ever merciful and ever good. Look at this. Verse 23 through 27. And it says, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Listen to that. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Look at that. The Lord restored them. Even though it was their disobedience that caused that. That's a wonderful word. So it doesn't matter if you think that you were the cause. Or if the enemy came in and took what was yours. God said that either way he will restore it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. This is what it means when it says God is good. He is the light and no darkness at all. He is there for his people. He is there for the body of Christ. That should put a shout in your heart. That is not over. As long as you are breathing, it's not over. You just have to seek the Lord and praise him and worship him. It doesn't matter if you think it was your fault. It doesn't matter if just because of unforeseen circumstances you have lost it. And this is important to everyone. This is important to kids, young adults, and grown folk. This is important. 
Because you need to know that ultimately everything is in God's hands. That he gives. Okay? And he allows things to be taken away. You need to know that it's his judgment and his judgment only. And that you are a child of God. You have a special audience with him. And that he will restore if you just believe in him. He will restore. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you are suffering from any illness. It doesn't matter if, oh, he's just putting this on my heart. It doesn't matter if you are an alcoholic, okay? It doesn't matter if you're into alcohol. It doesn't matter if you are into uh, uh, recreational substances. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is seek the Lord, and he can restore. But you have to do. You don't, you don't pray and continue to do those things. Okay? You have to put those things down. And you have to believe on God that he will restore. Okay? He can, he can change those things. He can reverse those things. So you put down the bottle, you put down those substances, and you go to God. You don't go to those things for comfort. You go to God for comfort. And he will change your future. You hear me? He will change your future. Just as he did, just as he does Israel, just as he did with David. He changed their futures. And like I said, you may not get back exactly what you lost, but you will gain back something more of value than what you lost. Okay? God will restore. He will bless it. It doesn't matter what happened. Your life isn't over. And it's not too late. David said, God is for you. You have to believe that. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. You have to believe that. You are a child of Christ. And God is for you. He will restore. It doesn't matter how little you have. It doesn't matter how bleak it may seem. He will bring it back unto you. You got to remember, folks. You have to remember that the Lord is looking to show himself strong in us. It's the word says that he's looking to and fro to see who he can show himself strong in. And he's going to use you to do that. But you, have, but you have to have enough faith to get up and walk. You have to have enough faith to do. Now, I'm not saying that the Lord can't bring it to you. But unless you hear that word specifically, you have to do. You have to believe. You have to put those other things that you're trusting in down, and you have to get up and believe in him. He loves you. He died for you. And if you believe that he died and rose again on the third day, well, then you need to shout. You need to say hallelujah. It's not over. I still have a future. I'm a believer in Christ. And I believe that God is good. He's just that good. And when you realize he's just that good, you're more grateful. You're filled with more compassion. You're filled with more loving kindness. And you'll realize that what you lost was just a learning experience. You learn that God is in control and there's nothing that he can't do. That his mercies are new every morning. I thank you all. I thank you all that pray for others. And trust in the Lord.
Thank you. And I just want to end it with a prayer like I always do. Let's, let's end this. Let's, let's, let's finish this with a prayer. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for your word. I thank you for everything that you do. And I pray, Lord, that everyone that hears the sound of my voice understands that you can restore and that you will restore. They just have to have faith in you. I thank you, God, and we appreciate you and we love you and we thank you. You are wondrous. You are the almighty. And I pray for blessings upon everyone. Thank you, God. And in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. All right. And I'll end that with uh, some worship. Thank you, everyone, and God bless. When I was searching, your love was never far. You made a way to get to me. You were the whisper leading me to your heart. Forever I belong to you. Now I can see clearly, my God, you are for me. You won't let go your love. Won't let me down. And I know it's true. Yeah, I know that your love is all around. I believe in you, holding on to you, holding on. I know you will never fail. I want all of you. You'll never change your love. Won't let me down. Love won't. sky with promises of your grace so I would find my way to you now I can see clearly my God you are for me you won't let go your love won't let me down and I know it's true yeah I know that your love is all around I believe in you Holding on to you, holding on, and I know you will never fail. I want all of you, you'll never change your love. Change your love.